because I've been really hammering home this week specifically and a little bit last week, but this week specifically about housing, evictions, homelessness. Uh, and I've kind of been traversing across the country as far as my research to determine how people are being affected, especially considering that the rent moratorium has been expiring across the United States of America that was put in place back during the pandemic. Right. And so when I'm determining this and I'm trying to figure out what's going on, I'm trying to see how it affects different demographics of people. Right. So these next couple of stories we're going to go over and I want to break down gentrification. I want to dig a little bit deeper into that. And then I also want to dig a little bit into homelessness, because uh, although I have not literally watched the entirety of some of these clips, I did watch them a little bit in order to make sure that they were sufficient for what it is that we're talking about. Uh, I need to hammer home a point to you guys, because I don't really think that you understand how important it is to invest in you and invest in your future, because the divide between the haves and the have nots and the middle class is completely going away. And I'm starting to see more people that are older. And this is what we're going to focus on today, because your grandparents is, is poor and your parents is really poor and they don't have anything put up for retirement. And you guys keep fighting me on how you need to invest in yourself and invest in your future. And then you're going to become a burden on taxpayers or you're just going to be flat out homeless and nobody is going to be able to save you. Nobody is going to be able to save you. And older people are going homeless. We're going to go over to San Diego and it's actually a little bit better over there, right? over in California, because at least they got good weather, but it does not mean that their conditions are any better. Uh, they are absolutely positively suffering, and it looks like they're going to live the majority of their days. The majority of their days is going to be spent trying to figure out where it is that they can get shelter every single night. Make sure you hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications. If you have not joined, uh, join a uh, Patreon link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Let's get to it, man. You're watching California's rising unhoused population is a growing number of seniors aging without a home. In the next half hour, you'll meet members of this vulnerable group, see their living conditions, and witness the challenges they face when trying to find help. Thanks for joining us. I'm Monica Dean. When we think about homelessness, seniors aren't typically the people who come to mind, but data show they are the fastest growing group among the unhoused population. Recently, a new study shows people 55 and older living on the streets make up a third of the unsheltered population here in California. These are not just people who have been homeless for a long time. Many of them are experiencing this for the first time as seniors. According to the California's Homeless Data Integration System, between 2017 and 2021, the number of people 55 and over who sought homelessness services increased 84%. By Let's stop there for a second. Do you know how big of a number that is to be growing by over 84%? By every stretch of the imagination, 84% is an outrageous, outrageous number. 84% is an outrageous number. These are going to be your fathers and your mothers and your grandmother and your grandmother and your grandfathers and your uncles and your aunties. And it might even be you, because I know that we think that we're going to live forever and that we always going to be able to work forever and that we ain't going to need our hips replaced. And we're going to have that good old insurance because you work in a job and they got insurance and you get health care coverage and you get dental and vision. And I know that you're thinking it's all good in the hood. But let me tell you something, bro. They were once us. They were once us. I am and my bag chasers, my Patreon members, they will tell you. I am absolutely 100% uh, dead set on pushing my people to make sure that they invest in their future. And I tell them, listen, make the sacrifice now. You can do what you want to do for the rest of your life. Make the sacrifice now and you can do what you want to do for the rest of your life. Because the narrative is always going to be, well, you know, we got homeless in this country already. And why are we bringing migrants in? But we creating housing for it. You know, I was looking at uh, some comments on a new development that I'm actually moving into today in downtown Detroit. And they say, oh, man, we need to create more homeless shelters. No, we don't. No, we don't. 
We need to create more opportunities and then make more informed decisions on how we're going to secure our future by doing the thing that's in our best interest, not create more homeless shelters. No, we don't. But we're going to continue to have more homeless people. And that's why you see trending on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube. Van life is still popping because people are trying to justify, oh, no, I just want to live a little bit more simple. No, you poor. And let's just be honest. You can't afford to live the way that you live. And you complain about inflation and housing and prices is going up. But we already seen this coming. I've been warning you all for years about it. But you don't want to do it. You don't want to pay off the debt. You don't want to start investing in yourself. You don't want to have a brokerage account. You still have a checking account. And you think that you can finance your way to, to success. And you keep talking about credit scores. And all you're going to do is put yourself in the same position as a lot of these unhoused. You see how they've conditioned us? Listen, I always, if you're starting to look at the titles of my videos, I say unhoused, unalive sometimes and stuff like that. Because they've even subconsciously conditioned me to look at it from a sympathetic perspective instead of calling it what it is. It's homelessness. It's homelessness. They are walking, talking, and living on the streets and have no place to live. And now places like San Diego, which was supposed to be an oasis because it's got the third best weather in the wintertime in the United States of America behind Hawaii and Miami, is supposed to be an oasis, but it's a tent city. It's turned everywhere in America. It's turning into a tent city. By comparison, people across all ages accessing homeless services increased by 43 percent. Those seniors are having to face tough choices, food, medicine or a roof, with many of them on a fixed income and the ever growing cost of living here in America's finest city. Seniors are faced with harsh living conditions and some very tough choices. Joining me now is NBC San Diego's Amber Frias, who has been researching and reporting on this topic. And Amber, you recently spent a few days meeting members of this vulnerable population and learning about how they fell into homelessness in the first place. Yeah, that's right, Monica. You know, we often hear that our homeless population just keeps growing. So I wanted to go out there, see why that is and who these people are, the ones who are ending up on our streets. And in speaking with advocates and just being out there, you know, mm -hmm. I came to realize these people are a lot older than what we sometimes assume they are. Yes, it's interesting to see the face of a topic that we certainly often generalize up close. And they are one of the most vulnerable populations. And Amber, they're facing a harsh new reality. Yeah, that reality is that working your whole life does not guarantee you'll have a roof over your head. Most of the people I spoke with simply cannot afford housing costs in this city. The majority had in one way or another either struggled to keep up with rising rent costs or are simply unable to find places to live due to their limited financial resources. As a result, as you pointed out at the top, data show seniors are indeed the fastest growing group among the homeless population. And with the help of one local activist, I got to spend some time with this growing community to better understand their living conditions and the challenges they face every day. Make sure you check in. That's a long story what she said. She, I'm going to go get a local activist. No, you're going to get somebody that you feel safe around that know the terrain that can help make sure that you keep you stay safe when you go and talking to these people in order to do this report. That's what that means. On a recent morning in the Ridgeview Webster neighborhood of Eastern San Diego, Chuck Scott stopped by to check on his truck. He was with a healthcare worker from a local rehabilitation center where he was staying. It was a discharge meeting in the hospital on Saturday. What were you in the hospital for? I pills down right here. The stay at the center is only temporary. This is what Scott calls home. Oh, the 69-year-old has been living out of his truck for the past two years. Well, it's definitely inconvenient, you know, because you got to go and take care of the people's houses and inconvenience them. You know, and, uh, and so now we need to find places to eat. And uh, it's not very comfortable to sleep in. Scott hardly stands out from the many people living in their cars at this same parking lot. As far as the sleeping arrangement, I'll sleep right here and try to move my seat as far back as I can so my legs will stretch up. A lot of times it doesn't work that way. And same with Irene, she'll try to do the same thing. Hey, imagine being a, a homeless couple together. No, I do you one better. Imagine being a homeless couple together, can't afford to find a place to live, but also you go and get a dog to be able to take care of like a child. Why are so many people that are quote unquote unhoused, 
Why do they always have pets to, to accompany? Why do they always have another mouth to feed? I did a report uh, of a story where a woman was basically homeless with a whole bunch of kids. I was in high school and I thought it was dumb in the first place because nobody in high school wants anybody to know that they're homeless. And if somebody knows that they're homeless, you know, you kind of have sympathy. I've even seen high school kids. They're not that cruel when it comes to people being homeless until it's time to cap on somebody. And then even the people that hear you cap, they kind of have sympathy towards the person that's homeless. Um, but I've, I've basically, you know, seen uh, them having per, uh, personal pets also. Like, how? Don't you got to feed? Ain't that another mouth to feed? And, and imagine being in a relationship and homeless at the same time and, and sleeping in your car and hoping that your, your house don't get drove on, don't, don't get towed away. Frank, who prefer to only go by his first name and his partner, Irene Rendon, have called their truck home for six months. Jesus. It's been it's been really, really hard, real hard to get help. I thought I was on a waiting list for six months and I'm not even on a list. And I thought I had done the footwork and I just thought the, the government was going to help homeless people. You know what I mean? Why we have to jump through all these hoops to get housing. They want us off the street and stuff. And it's really hard. And to be honest with you, oh, they got two dogs. Jesus Christ. And the dogs look like they're in better health than, than the dogs. Is nice, healthy, groomed, haircut, the whole thing, right? They look like they're in better condition than the actual people that's in the car. And here's the, here's the key. Here's the kicker, right? Because I still think that you need to do the thing that's in your own best interest and be responsible for yourself. But the kicker for this whole thing is the minute that a migrant comes over here, they get to stay in a hotel. Let me hit the triangle for myself. The minute that a migrant comes over here, they get to stay in a hotel. You better figure it out, though. You better figure it out. You better get it together, big dog. You're going to be on the waiting list. They come over here and get immediate help. You're going to be over here sleeping in your car with your dog. A group all above the age of 55 find themselves in the middle of a growing crisis, aging without a home. It's torture. California accounts for about a third of the nation's homeless population, and among this population, seniors are the fastest growing group. In San Diego, people 55 and older living in the streets make up at least 29% of the unsheltered population, with 80% of them becoming homeless in their own hometown. Now, these are people that you know have lived and worked here in San Diego their entire lives who have just been priced out of the system and unable to, you know, finish, you know, in essence, in the homes that they had. Teresa Smith is the CEO of Dreams for Change, a nonprofit running San Diego safe sleeping sites. The two designated lots offer safe, legal camping space for people experiencing homelessness. They are literally building tent cities now. I never thought that I'd get to the day to where there's organizations and companies that's dedicated to building tents on sand in order to make sure that people are housed. And we got our borders that's completely open and people can't figure out a place in order to stay warm at night. This is so sad. This is so bad. This is one of the worst things I, honestly, I just never could imagine that this would be America in 2024 to where you basically got tent cities and people are putting up tarps on top of a tent. And the tent companies are the ones that's actually becoming incredibly profitable because we know that the homeless population is continuing to explode. And your mother and your grandmother and your grandpappy is the ones that's going to be sleeping in their car. And if not, then that means that you're going to become a son husband. I never thought I'd see the day that this was going to become our cultural norm. Hundreds of individuals are currently housed, and Smith says at least 45% of them are 55 and older. Um, I think it's happening more rapidly now, yes, because of the cost inflation and the cost of living. Um, it really is pushing them out of those housing situations, and there's nothing to jump back into. And we have such a shortage of literally senior housing. So even as they start to approach those senior ages, where they may need a little bit more of that support as any other senior would be, there is nowhere that is affordable for them to even go. That's exactly what happened to Scott, who at one point was living inside his very own one-bedroom apartment. I, um, my rent went from $800 to $1,600. 
and I couldn't afford to move back in after they remodeled. So, um, you know, they said they give me first choice to move back in, but I can't, I only get $1,000 a month for Social Security. So how can I afford to pay $1,600 a month? I can't. Stories like Scott's are common, especially among the older populations living on the streets. How often do you see people, you know, of older age, like seniors, like 60, 70, coming into the shelter? You see a lot of them. You know, a lot of them that need medical attention and stuff like that. And a lot of them that shouldn't even be here should be somewhere else like like convalescent home or something, you know? And and it's sad, you know? I mean, as surprised as they ain't got, like, you know, kids that want to take care of them. Some people are stuck in their old ways of, like, not trying to get help for themselves. Like, you know, being stubborn. Like, that's how I am, you know? I won't call an ambulance coming to help me. I'll, I'll lay there and die. I don't care. That's just me. Daniel Ofredo is currently living at one of San Diego's safe sleeping sites. He managed being on the streets for the past 20 years until life started catching up to him. Now at 51 years old, Lofredo suffers from a wide range of illnesses. I'm dealing with sci uh, sciatic nerve damage in my right leg. I got cellulitis, um, other, other issues you know, I don't want to get into. Research shows that living on the streets prematurely ages and sickens people. Years. When talking about homelessness, 50 is the new 75. Margot Cushell, director of UC San Francisco's Benioff Homeless and Housing Initiative, has been studying senior homelessness for the past decade. Whether it be measures of cognitive decline, mobility problems, problems with function, falling, all of the things that we usually think of happening to people in late life just happened to people 20 or 30 years earlier. And it's unfortunate because even though we're armed with this information and even though we're armed with this data and we know that it happens and we know that it's something that could absolutely transform your life and impact you, we still live in La Vida Loca. We still YOLO out here in these streets. Yeah, that's cute when you're in your 20s. But I think that when you start to get into your upper 20s and you start to hit 30, you start thinking about life a little bit differently. Because I know for me, I was like, you know what? I got a daughter. And I don't want her to be saddled with student loan debt. And I want to make sure that my family is straight if anything was to ever happen to me. And so I honestly started to put things together and started to put things in place in addition to being very intentional with how it is that I leverage and spend my money. And then instead of being out here tricking off in these streets, um, I started investing. And I think that at some point I realized, OK, well, it's time to break out. It's time that I could have both because I've made enough money and I've gotten to the point to where I could retire and I don't have to worry about money ever again. And then at the same time, I want to continue to invest because I want to live a certain type of lifestyle. But I'm also sympathetic because I coach a lot of people and I have a lot of conversations based off of finance and I give people game and I'm really, really holding them accountable on making sure that they're doing the thing that's in their own best interest. You don't want to have to depend on Social Security and the federal government in which it's not even fully funded. There's no guarantee that Social Security is even going to be around by the time that you decide that you wanted to retire or when the workforce forces you to retire because there's no more opportunities left for you or your body break down and you can't take it anymore. And so you hold on as long as you possibly can, but then you can't hold on anymore. We got automation as displacing people. We have AI. Migrants is coming over here and they taking over a whole bunch of jobs. Your body breaking down. You tired. You tired right now when you're only 32 years old. What you think you're going to feel like when you're 64? I don't want to have to work for the rest of my life in order to be able to maintain a lifestyle or at the very least keep some shelter over my head. It'll be a cold, cold day in hell before you ever see me out here homeless. And I'm not going to sit here and have my daughter take care of me. She should be able to live a full life herself and also be able to thrive and I should be able to pass something down to her. But I think that a lot of people is just ignoring it. They acting like it don't exist. They acting like it's not a problem. They acting like they're not going to have to uh, at some point pay the piper. You got to get rid of the debt and you got to start investing in yourself. You got to start pouring into your 401k. You got to start pour pouring into your Roth IRA, your Roth 401k. If you're not doing these things, then you are going to be exactly like them. If you think you can live and, and, and you, some of y'all got this high school mentality 
where you was messed up in high school and you said, no, when I get to college, I'm going to get it together. And when I get out of college, I'm going to get it together. And when I wind up getting a job, I'm going to get it together. No, when I turn 30, I'm going to get it together. No, you're going to live your whole life and be broke your whole life. And that's no way to live. That's no way to thrive. 